If you have cravings for salty foods at night especially, this video is for you. And I'm talking about in the form of popcorn, peanuts, pretzels, chips. I believe the reason why you crave that is because you actually are deficient in sodium, okay? Now, why would you crave those foods, those junk foods, and not just regular salt? Well, it's similar to if a woman is pregnant and she craves ice cream, for example, she's usually deficient in calcium. And there's other people that have some pretty strange cravings too, like for example, dirt. Uh, they might need iron. So apparently when you're deficient in something, your body will cause the craving to something that maybe resembles that, that mineral or nutrient. And this topic of salt is very fascinating. Now, realize that salt is sodium chloride. Sodium is one of the minerals. So I'll try to differentiate between sodium and salt as we go through this presentation, but the World Health Organization is advising that people start lowering their salt intakes to about 2000 milligrams or less per day. And it would take about one teaspoon of salt to achieve 2300 milligrams of sodium. So realize that the salt has the chloride and there's also requirements for that, but we're gonna focus on sodium right now and also salt. Now it is true that Americans consume more than this amount uh, by a factor of a thousand. So they're usually doing about 3,300 milligrams of salt per day. But that salt that they're consuming is not coming from the salt shaker. It is coming from the other foods with the hidden salt in it. The refined carbohydrates, the bread, the cold cut deli meats. So of course, someone along the line had this idea that, wow, uh, people are consuming too much salt, so it must be the salt that's the culprit. Is there a possibility that it could be the other ingredients that come with the salt? I mean, before refrigeration, uh, we salted our foods excessively. We consumed a lot more salt in meats and other foods. And our risk of heart attacks back then, even blood pressure was a lot less than it is right now. But of course, if you look at this logically, if you add more salt, you have more fluid, have more blood pressure, have more heart attacks, right? That makes sense logically. But there's some fascinating studies that I'm gonna put down below that I highly recommend that you read if you're on a low sodium or low salt diet. Because what these studies show, and they're very credible studies, that your risk for heart problems, stroke, insulin resistance go up when you go on a low salt diet. And there's another study that I'm gonna show down in the description that when you increase the sodium in the diet, the, the risk factors for heart attack and stroke plummet. Why is that? Well, if you read the study, you're gonna also find those people that were increasing the sodium also were increasing their potassium, okay? And it's the potassium that protects the heart. I mean, there's an incredible push to put everyone that has high blood pressure or heart problems on a low salt diet, but there's hardly any emphasis on raising the potassium levels or even more importantly is removing the refined carbs that are attached to the salt. Their focus is to lower the salt, as in salt-free refined carbohydrate type foods, which leads to more consumption of the refined carbohydrates that are now salt-free. Now this next part is very, very interesting. If you've checked out, check back in right now because this part is very, very important. Your body uh, has a hormone called aldosterone that has one vital purpose, to retain and hold sodium. Your body wouldn't have this hormone unless there was a very important purpose of having sodium. Without sodium, your nerves cannot conduct nerve impulses. Without sodium, your muscles can't contract. Your fluids would not be in balance, okay? You wouldn't be able to transport calcium and other nutrients as well without sodium. There's this thing called a sodium potassium pump in nearly all of your cells of your body that help transport things through the cell membrane. Very, very important. So this is why the body has this hormone aldosterone. And take a well guess what triggers aldosterone? A low sodium or low salt diet. Okay, so your body will make three times as much aldosterone when you're on a low sodium diet. If you think about blood pressure medication, there's several medications that work by blocking aldosterone, okay? Or a diuretic, which will cause an excess release of sodium and water through the urine. And as a side note, older people lose this function. In other words, they don't have the amount of aldosterone to hold the sodium. So usually they're very, very deficient in sodium. I mean, the side effects from not having enough sodium are way worse than having too much sodium. 
So if you combine someone on a salt-free diet, okay, on diuretics, then we have the excessive amount of water. And I'm talking about people that are drinking massive amounts of water, not eight or 10 glasses. I'm talking about like a gallon a day and they're not working out and they're on a salt-free diet. That can be very, very dangerous to the heart. You need sodium for the heart to work, for your muscles to work. When you're on a ketogenic diet, you need more salt as well because when you're on the typical diet, which is high carbohydrate, you're retaining a lot of fluid. You're holding more salt, okay? When you're on keto, you get rid of the excess fluid and you also get rid of some of these minerals, so you need to put them back in. Exercise produces sweat and you're gonna lose sodium through exercise. And of course, being out in the heat will do it as well. A pro football player, could potentially lose up to 6,000 milligrams of sodium in 90 minutes. If you have liver damage, as in cirrhosis, you could actually be deficient in sodium. With adrenal fatigue, you're gonna have low sodium. This is why, like for example, in conditions like Addison's disease, where they don't have enough adrenal hormones, you always see a, a severe deficiency of sodium, and these people have to consume a ton of salt. And you're also gonna see a sodium deficiency in hypothyroidism. I would recommend consuming at a minimum between one and 1 1.5 teaspoons of sea salt per day. If you increase your salt, you should get rid of the cravings for salty junk foods at night. And it would be very, very beneficial for you to take one average day of eating and analyze how much salt you're actually consuming or how much sodium you're consuming. And then just compare it to this to see if you're really under or you're over and, and also to see if you actually crave uh, salty uh, foods at night. Uh, and then you can make adjustments on that as well. Because there is a lot of salt in the food that you're eating already, we just wanna know how much you need to add to that to um, meet your requirements. You're also gonna notice that your energy is gonna go up. You have more endurance because the cardiovascular system will function better. The other important thing to realize is that the sodium works with potassium, okay, in the body. So we always have this ratio. If you're increasing more sodium, you need to increase more potassium. We need 4,700 milligrams. Very few people consume this amount. If you're consuming this amount, you absolutely positively do not need to worry how much salt that you're consuming because you're gonna have enough to act as a buffer. And one way to achieve that is to increase your vegetable amounts, okay? Seven to 10 cups of vegetables per day. It's not that hard, you have two salads, I do all my salad one sitting. I have one large bowl um, and it's roughly between seven and 10 cups. Some people can't do that. There are vegetable substitutes you can do to enhance your vegetables. I'll put some links down below, but you do need to start increasing this in the diet because this will also give you the magnesium. And a lot of people put sea salt on their salad, which I highly recommend, or they might put salty olives or um, Parmesan cheese, which is salty or other cheeses. That would be a very, very good idea. And lastly, if you're on a low salt diet because your doctor told you you need to be on one, send your doctor uh, the studies that I put down below to have them just take a look at it. Because this is quite fascinating where you have these diets that talk about the risk factors for high blood pressure and heart problems go down when you increase more salt. It's really because you're increasing this, uh, the potassium as well. All right, guys, there you have it. These are the action steps. So if you wanna get notified with all my content, click the notification bell next to subscribed.